Welcome back to Global Marketplace Session 2. Today, the materials that you are going to need are once again the table tents and the student workbooks. And you need the trade dispute cards that are found in the kit. This activity is really going to show the students all about the WTO, NAFTA, and the importance of trade barriers. Really the regulations that really center around trade and how we make everything work together with the worldwide organizations um, trading back and forth. So the first part of this activity is to first of all talk about the importance of trade. Why do we trade? And I always like to talk about how, think about bananas. If we didn't trade, would we in South Dakota be able to eat bananas? We wouldn't because even if we trade domestically, we would not be able to grow bananas readily here in South Dakota. Think about beef. You know, if Japan um, didn't trade with us, would they be able to have a lot of beef? Well, no, because they don't have a lot of grassland to raise the cattle. So get the students to think about the why behind the importance of trade. Then think about what are the good things about trade and what are some of the negative things about trade. Get the students to think about the good things such as when we're consumers, we have the opportunity to have choice and oftentimes that competition drives the price down because we have options due to trade. Some of the negative things are we could possibly lose jobs here in America if we are constantly trading from other countries and our factories might get shut down. So just think about that and get the students to think about some of those pros and cons of trade. Then you're going to jump into talking to the students a little bit about trade barriers. And in their student workbooks, you are going to notice on page three, it's going to talk about the different kinds of trade barriers. Basically, the barriers help slow down and regulate trade. So what I always like to do is have the students work um, individually at this point, and I ask for a volunteer to read the definition. So for example, quota. I would have a student read the definition, and then I would have all the students circle the key word. So for quota, I have them circle the word amount. Quota is a number, an amount. Tariff is a tax, and I usually have them repeat that numerous times in the classroom. I have them circle the word tax. Subsidy is government funding. It comes from the government, so I have them circle or underline government. Embargo is a ban. It's actually banned from a trade regulation. And then a standard is a requirement, and I have them underline the word specific requirement so that they know it's a standard, it is a requirement that is put on that specific trade. Once I talk through it with them as a whole class, I have the students work with an elbow partner or a neighbor that's very close to them, and I have them turn to the next page, and what they have the opportunity to do is to read these various situations, and they get to decide what type of barrier is being placed on that country. I always do one together as an example. So for example, it says country K will not allow more than one million digital cameras to be imported. Well, one million is a number, so we know that it's an amount and so it's a quota. So they would work individually on these different situations. One thing to note and to tell the students is that these um, specific barriers can be used more than once. Then, due to time, I have them come back whole class and I have them quickly walk through them to see what answers they came up with. Just notice sometimes um, there's a couple of them that could typically be um, more than one thing and sometimes the students like to bring that out. So as long as the students can defend their answers, sometimes there's a few that can be actually more than one thing. Out, um, to transition out of that activity, I always like to talk about how even though we have these barriers to help slow down that trade, there's still going to be some disputes. And you will see that in the middle of your activity page. So what what a lot of countries do when there are disputes is they really turn to two different things. One is the NAFTA, the North America Free Trade Act, and that is an act that's between Canada, the United States, and Mexico. And you will notice some talking points bulleted in your guidebook to lead you in a discussion about NAFTA. Then you want to talk about the World Trade Organization, and our main activity today is going to be centered on the WTO. So once again, you are going to notice in your guidebook some discussion, question, and prompts regarding the WTO. 
One thing I like to do to make it a little interactive and to get the students participating is I like to do a role play using the flow chart on page five of the student workbook. What I do is I have two students come forward to the front of the room and I have them stand back to back as though they have had a dispute in the hallway. And I usually ask the class to choose a dispute. Maybe it's that somebody got tripped and all of their um, papers went flying around or maybe somebody was running in the hallway and um, bumped into someone. They can choose what that dispute might be. What I always do is I walk them through this flow chart. So first I have them stand back to back upset with each other and I specifically um, tell them that they could work it out together and I have them shake hands and smile at each other and basically they might be able to work out the dispute on their own but if not they might have to take it a different route so if the problem is not resolved it is presented to the WTO and in this case I make the classroom the WTO but I talk about how in real life it might go to a classroom teacher if it's big enough it might go to the principal or the superintendent and ultimately if there's a dispute in a school system it might even go to a school board if that's applicable for your situation so what I do is I walk them through these um, last two large bubbles and I talk about how a lot of times principals or administration will look to the school policy handbook because that's something that the students are very familiar with and very similarly to that there is a general agreement on tariffs and trade the GATT that's basically a regulation handbook the answer of how to solve that dispute might be found in that book the consequences etc just like a school policy handbook might have some answers to what a discipline action might be and then finally ultimately there is a panel of experts called the WTO that's going to have that final say so this is just an easy way that I make it visual and I get the students involved to get them up and moving in this activity then you're actually going to start the activity of the day and that is to split the students into, into small groups and to give them each a trade dispute card so each small group is going to become the WTO they are going to read the situation and on the bottom of each card it gives them two options so they are going to choose if they want to do option A option B or maybe they don't like either option and they might want to come up with their own solution C once the students have the opportunity to work in their small groups, it's always great to invite them to come up to the front of the room and to share their presentations with the other groups. What you'll notice is that there's three different topics, but two of the same card. So for example, you're going to have two groups that have the turtle situation. What I like to do is to bring up both groups, have them share the situation one time, and then have them each share their perspectives they may agree or they may disagree, but that might create some great discussion in the class as well. Some volunteers have found it very beneficial to use this as a class debate instead of having the students work in small groups. So some volunteers like to hold it themselves and actually present the case to the whole class, have the class choose which side they want, and then they create a friendly debate and have them talk back and forth on the pros and cons of each stance. It's kind of up to you how you would like to run it in the classroom, but that's another great idea. Make sure that you spend just the last few minutes with a summary and review, making sure that you cover the um, variety of big points in today's activity and enjoy session two.